this image has to be held up as transcendent, and by that I mean it's, it's got to be, it's an image that's got to be at the basis of a value structure that actually works insofar as there's going to be human beings, because there aren't any human beings without the infant and the mother, and so if that's not held up as, a, as an image of, of ultimate value, then everything falls apart and it's something our culture does extraordinarily badly I had a client recently admit to me in ashamed tones that she wanted to have children I thought, and I said, well you don't have to be ashamed of that, especially not if you're talking to me and she said, oh that's such a relief because I can't talk to anyone about it at work they, they seem to think that it's, you know, degrading I thought, that you can hardly diagnose a culture as more pathological than than that, that's so appalling and it's so hard it's one of the things I really feel badly for young women because they're not guided through this with any sense whatsoever and I'll tell you what my experience has been working with women and you can take this for what it's worth and, and I've worked with women who've achieved the highest levels of their profession I don't mean just in academia but in a number of different fields this is what happens we'll, we'll take the typical woman, conservative woman because they're more typical, conscientious not particularly open, so they're, they're dutiful people, you know, they're existing within the structures of their society so I'll take female lawyers as a classic example, so they're very good in high school, very hard working, very intelligent then they go to college, they're very good in college, they nail their damn grades, they do their studying, they get their A's and they, and they ace their LSATs so they're smart too then they go off to do their articling and they're really really good at it and then they get offered an associate position and they're really, really good at it and then by the time they're 30 they make partner and let's say they're in high pressure, high paying jobs $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $500 an hour okay, what's your life like? you work all the time period 70 hours a week, 75 hours a week, flat out and you don't get to make any mistakes and if your client calls you at 3 in the morning on, Monday, on Sunday you say, I'm really glad to hear you, hear from you because if you don't, there's some hot law firm in New York that'll take your client from you at a moment's notice and the client is paying you, whatever, the firm $750 an hour, of which maybe you get $350 and what they want is an answer about something really complicated right bloody now and you can say all you want about the fact that women have a difficult time with that because it's a male dominant patriarchy any, any female lawyer who's hit 30 and is a partner that has any sense at all knows that's complete bloody rubbish it's market determined right to the core what happens to the women when they're in their 30s? they all leave the high end law firms why? because who in their right mind would want to live like that? that's the issue, right? once you make about $60,000 a year for your family, but let's say for you personally additional income makes zero, has zero impact on your quality of life zero so why work 80 hours a week? well men will do it, some men, very few a handful of hyper competitive men who are obsessed with hitting the pinnacle of the given dominance hierarchy they're in will happily work 80 hours a week and they'll forego everything else relationships, family, children way in the second category and so those men are often very difficult to live with too because they're so obsessed with their career it's hard to have a relationship with them and maybe they don't have much of a relationship with their kids but they're damn good at what they do and part of that is, is they're smart and disciplined and they'll work non-stop all the time it's like an obsession and that's the sort of people who run things those are the people who run things well they're often also disagreeable too because you want to, you want to manage people? really? they're not going to like you you know, and it's not an easy thing to not be liked and actually if you're an agreeable person, and women are more agreeable than men it's quite painful to be disliked but if you're in a managerial and executive position the probability that people are going to like you is quite low now, if you're a real son of a bitch then they're going to dislike you more but it's, it's, those, those positions are very stressful partly because of the interpersonal dynamics and they're also incredibly, incredibly competitive so the women hit that at 30 and they're completely qualified and the law firms are bloody desperate to keep them because it's really hard to find highly qualified people especially once you've put all that time into training them especially if they're also good at bringing in business the law firms trip over themselves to try to keep them they can't the women think why in the world am I doing this? why in the world would anyone in their right mind do this? especially because they're often married by that point too and generally they've married a husband who makes as much money or more than them so they don't need the damn money and so they think, 
well, there's more to life than this, which is exactly the right thing to think and so then they go and find a job that's 9 to 5 and controllable so that they can hire a nanny and have some kids and have a life and it's like, yes, that's the intelligent thing to do so, we've got things backwards in our culture, we're thinking, at least in part, why aren't there more women in positions of power? wrong question the right question is why are there any men at all who want those positions of power? Because it's not just positions of power You have to be such a knothead to think that Oh, it's a position of power It's like, sure But it's a position of overwhelming responsibility And if you make mistakes, you're done Right? It's not like you occupy that position of power and everyone does what they're told all the time and your life is easy It's like, forget about that People are on your case to do exactly the right thing all the time, 100% of the time and maybe you want that, and maybe you don't, so the what, I don't know what people think, is these people are all sitting in their offices with their like, feet up on the desk, smoking cigars and oppressing the world it's like, that isn't how it works, those people, they work flat out, all the time so, and it's fine if that's what you want, and some people are like that, they're hyper-industrious people, right, from a trait perspective no matter where you put them, if you put them in a forest with an axe, they just wander around chopping down trees non-stop, right because it's built into them but, if you want to have a balanced life, and, and you should want that, you know, because the other thing you'll find and this is God's gospel truth, is that the older you get, if you have any sense at all, the more important your family is to you like, the, the, the utility of your career, maybe that peaks around 35 or 40, and it starts to decline pretty rapidly after that and what happens, if you're fortunate, you have someone in your life that you love, that you've woven yourself together with, and you have some kids, so that you have something to do from the time you're 50 till the time you're 80 and so, it's a real mistake, it's a barren future without children, man, I can tell you that, it's a real mistake and so we do a terrible job of, of say, putting that image forward and saying, well, yeah